Now, I'm typically not a fan of larger upright pianos, to be honest. Besides a few exceptions like Bechstein's Concert 8 or the Busendorfer 130, I normally prefer the action and the sonic intimacy that comes with a really great, say, 47 or 48 inch upright. The argument for a larger upright like this is, of course, that you're getting the same string length as a five and a half foot grand. And if you place it well in a room, a pretty similar dynamic range, but at a lower price point and a smaller footprint. Sounds great so far, right? Well, the downside with many of the 52 inch upright pianos out there is that the touch is a lot more difficult to control. When you're playing at lower volumes, the hammer kind of tends to meander and not return as quick causing a lot of missed notes. And when you're playing at louder volumes, there's so much sound coming at your ears that you tend to pull back and really underplay. And that can be really disorienting for players who aren't used to it. So to find a 52 inch piano that gives you the dynamic response and low volume control that you'd expect from a small grand is unusual. To find one that delivers both for $15,000 practically unheard of. When we first started doing this channel, the K500 was amongst the first instruments we reviewed, but that was five years ago. And since then, I've reviewed and experienced nearly the entire gamut of what this industry has to offer. And so coming back to the K500 has been pretty eye-opening. In today's video, we're gonna review the K500 specs, do some playing, of course, discuss the musical experience and how it compares with some of the other industry favorites. Finally, we're gonna talk about why the K500 might just be the best value 52 inch upright on the planet. Now, firstly, this is, as my loyal viewers are probably already scrambling to mention in the comments, not technically a 52 inch upright. It's 130 centimeters, which makes it just over 51 inches or about the same size as Busendorfer's full size upright. And it also clocks in at about 525 pounds. They've equipped it with the Neotex key surfaces, which is that micro porous synthetic surface, very similar to say Yamaha's Ivorite. It uses the Millennium 3 upright action with the carbon composites, which as we know, has a reduced mass increased rigidity and better structural stability from season to season since it doesn't really react to temperature or humidity the same way the wood does. It has a longer bass string of 48 and a half inches, which is around the same length that most five and a half foot grands are gonna have. So plenty of bass clarity. The hammers are mahogany, they're double felted. They're also T-stapled for lots of longevity and stability and low distortion at high velocities and the mahogany makes it extra lightweight for faster rebound. The soundboard on this is Alaskan Sitka and it is tapered, which as we've talked about in numerous other videos means that the soundboard is thicker in the center and then as it kind of approaches the outer boundaries, it gets thinned out. This is done to increase the percentage of the soundboard that's actually resonating and that tends to increase sustain times and generally just ups the efficiency of the whole soundboard. The K500 surprisingly also has duplex scaling in the treble. And this combined with the lack of agraphs means that you're gonna have a very thick sounding treble with tons of upper partials and desired inharmonicities. The cabinet has a modern clean look that combines hard angles with soft bevels and maintains really a classic European aesthetic. And just like on their grands, the K500 has a lot of key bed reinforcement in the form of steel beaming. Now, let's hear and feel how all of those specs translate into a musical experience.
actually sit down and take the K500 in for what it is, you're kind of left thinking to yourself, well, what is an upright piano supposed to do other than what the K500 is giving me? The action is incredibly responsive and it feels great whether you're in the key, outside of the key, if you're playing quickly, if you're playing slowly, loudly, quietly. It's responding so much like a mid-size grand, it's uncanny. But then you've got the tone, which is shockingly uh, rich and diverse uh, and such a remarkable color right from the bottom to the top. Here's what I'm picking up that to me makes this uh, such an enjoyable and, and maybe even totally unique experience. The bass has a tremendous amount of clarity and depth without really ever giving you any boominess or unwanted cabinet resonance. Sometimes when you're in an upright piano and you hear the whole cabinet starts to get a little woofy, uh, because there's any bass response at all, it's like, oh wow, this has great bass. But when you get beside one like the K500, where you have the clarity, you still have a lot of richness, but you don't get that you know, woofy thing happening on certain notes. It's like, oh, okay, that's what really great high definition bass should sound like and is, is able to sound like out of an upright piano. Just like Kawhi Grands, I mean, it's the same bass string manufacturing. Um, there's a lot of brassiness and color coming off of that, but particularly having just done a review on the Beckstein A6, which is, you know, a considerably more expensive piano than this, the K500 through its breakpoint between the treble and the bass bridge is so even. <laughs> When you get up into your uh, kind of midsection, it's a very open tone in the middle. There's a lot of singing qualities to it. But the attack is quite round. Um, it's, it's less bell-like than what you'd normally get on, say, a German piano. And another thing I'm noticing playing this is you really don't feel the need or the temptation to reach for the quiet pedal when you're playing a little more subtly. And this is something uh, that's unusual. Uh, people who play a lot of upright pianos and particularly larger upright pianos will know exactly what I'm talking about. Often you feel like there's this loss of control and you need to get on the soft pedal so that you're not missing as many uh, strikes or you've got the sensitivity you need. Uh, you just don't feel the need to do that on this instrument at all. There's a, there's a lot of uh, both harmonics and enharmonicity happening uh, in the top. A lot of shimmer uh, occurring. But I like how it's balanced. It almost has a bit of a Steinway-esque um, shimmer to the top end. It's less prominent than when you get on something like a Schimmel where that shimmer, coincidentally, uh, happens to be a lot more prominent. This is a little more in the background, but it's still really uh, gorgeous and um, nicely balanced. So we've heard it, we've talked about it, 
How now does the K500 fit into today's marketplace? When you consider the whole package, the longest bass string, tapered Sitka soundboard, duplex scaling, mahogany hammers, grand piano length key sticks, concert grade key surfaces, grand like repetition speed, and advanced pianissimo control, all for a likely selling price of around 15,000 USD, give or take, depending on your region, this is one of, if not the, top value full-size upright pianos in its class. Move into the European category and sure, add $10,000. And of course, there's a slew of new options that hit all sorts of different value points. And most importantly, personal musical preference is ultimately gonna lead you to the piano that's the best fit for your musical tastes. But at the very least, the K500 should make the short list of any shopper focused on the mainstream brands. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this return look at Kawhi's K500. I certainly have. If you haven't yet subscribed and you're enjoying the channel, we'd really love for you to do so. We love seeing this community grow. And of course, please let us know what you thought of the video below. Leave us a comment. We respond to as many of those as we possibly can. My name is Stu Harrison. We'll see you again soon.